Hi everyone, this is Midnight Mommy. So for today's video, I'm going to teach you how to solve for problems involving free-fall cases using kinematic equations. If you're not familiar with UAM equations yet, I suggest that you watch my video on this one. So I'm posting the link here. You can find the link down below. Or you can also um, click that um, link here that you can find on the video. So once again, we have here the following variables. You have VF for the final velocity, VI for the initial velocity, D for the distance. Typically, the distance here refers to the vertical distance or the height. In some textbooks, you can see uh, D here as H, or sometimes they also use the variable y, okay, so which refers to the y-axis. And then you also have here a for the acceleration. Now for this case, we will be using the acceleration due to gravity, which is equal to a constant. And then you have your t for the time. Before we use these equations in a problem, let me just first um, discuss to you what are the things that you need to consider in solving free fall cases. So the first one is that we have to remember that for free fall cases, the acceleration that we will be using for all the equations is equal to the acceleration due to gravity. In some textbooks, this is denoted as G only. Okay, so that's A sub G or the acceleration due to gravity. And that is a constant value of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Why is it negative? The negative sign only denotes the downward direction. So remember that if the object is released or dropped, that means the initial velocity is equal to zero. And then always remember that the acceleration is always negative, okay? So don't make the mistake of um, forgetting the negative sign there or else um, your whole equation will be messed up. Now you always have to remember that for the motion of objects, for an upward motion, uh, the velocity is always considered to be positive. And if you have a downward motion, the velocity is always negative. So, but remember that the acceleration due to gravity, whether the object is moving up or if it's moving down, it is always equal to negative. Now, at the highest point, your final velocity is equal to zero. Okay, so why do we say that? Because when an object is thrown upwards, typically at the highest point or once it reaches its maximum height, the object will momentarily stop. Okay, it will momentarily stop before it returns back to its original position or before it goes down. Okay, so let's have our first example here. A construction worker accidentally drops a brick from a high scaffold. What is the velocity of the brick after 4.0 seconds? And how far does the brick fall during this time? Okay, so to solve for this problem, we have to always identify the given quantities first. Okay, so let's write down the given quantities. And remember that whenever you're writing down the given quantities, you have to make sure that you're reading the problem carefully so that you will not miss out on anything. So a construction worker accidentally drops. Okay, so the word drop here denotes that your initial velocity is equal to zero. So remember what I told you earlier that all objects that are dropped and released, the initial velocity is always equal to zero. Okay? In this case, we're looking for the final velocity okay, after four seconds. So we have here the time that is four seconds. Okay, now... In free fall cases, you have to remember that although it is not stated in the problem, since the object is freely falling, okay, it's falling, the fact that it is falling, you always have to remember that there is the acceleration due to gravity. So that's always part of the given. So that's negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Again, why do we have it as negative? Because the direction of the acceleration due to gravity is always downwards. So let's try to solve for the final velocity first. Okay, so given the list that we have here, you have VI, VFT, and AG, we will now choose among the four equations here, which of these will be the perfect equation to use for our problem. Okay, so remember that we have to make sure that all of these variables listed here can be found on that equation. Okay, so for the first one, you have VF, check, Okay, so that is the unknown. 
And then you have the VI, which is also given here. And then you have the acceleration is also given in the list. And finally, you have the T. Okay, so therefore, we can immediately use the first equation to solve our problem, okay? So we will not be able to use the second, the third, the, the second, the third, and the fourth form. Okay, why? Because you were given here with the distance. In the problem, there was no given distance. So therefore, we cannot use these three other equations. Okay, so using the first equation, you have V sub F is equal to V sub I plus AT. Okay, so now that we have this equation here, we will now identify which of the variables is equal to zero. So why do we need to do that? Because it makes our equations simpler, okay? Because we can simply cancel out the zero. So in this case, your V sub I is equal to zero. So where is that here in the equation? So we have V sub I here. So this is just equal to zero. So we can just simply cross that out. So now we can simplify our equation into VF is equal to A sub G times T, okay? Now we proceed with the substitution. Okay, so V sub F now is equal to your um, A sub G is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And then times our time, the time is four seconds. Okay. So as you can see, I'm writing down my unit here, like in a fraction form, so I can see which variable or which unit can be canceled out. So as you can see here, we can cancel out the S here and then the other S here, so leaving you with a final unit of meter per second. So the fact that we were able to derive the correct final unit for the velocity, that means we use the correct equation. Okay, so we have your VF, okay? Now let's use our calculator for this one. Okay, so that's um, 9.8, so that's negative. Okay, so times four. So the answer is negative 39.2. Okay, so we have your negative 39.2 meters per second. Okay, so what does the negative sign denote? It only denotes that your object is going downwards. Remember, the sign tells you what is the direction of the motion of the object. Now, let's try to solve the second part, which is in this case, we are looking for the distance, okay? The distance that the brick has fallen. Okay, so again, let's go back to our given. So for our given, we have here, the initial velocity is equal to zero because it says here that the brick was dropped, okay? And then we have here your time. The time given is 4.0 seconds. And then we know that the acceleration due to gravity is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared because this is a free fall case. So now we're looking for the distance, okay? So this is the vertical distance, okay? That your brick has traveled while it was falling, okay? So given the following list, okay, of, of variables, let's now identify which of the following equations we can use for this. Okay, let's look at the first one. So VF is equal to VI plus AT. Well, the D here is not given, okay? So we don't have the D. We can find that here on the first equation. So therefore, we cannot use this equation. Now let's move on to the second one. So the second one is D is equal to VIT. So we have VI here and we have T here. And then you have plus one half A. So we have the acceleration here and we also have the time, the T. Okay, so therefore we can use the second one. Okay, so for the third one, let's try that. Okay. So for the third one, we have VF squared is equal to VI squared plus 2AD. Actually for this, you can also use this one, okay, Y because um, we have already solved for the VF previously, okay? So you can also use the third one if you like. But most of the time, if I'm going to solve the problem, I'd rather um, use the ones that are already given here, okay? Um, rather than using a value that I was um, able to solve earlier, okay? Because it makes it more accurate, okay? But of course, not all the time it's applicable. There are times where it you need the first value that you have computed for so that you can use it for the second problem. Well, nevertheless, either of the two equations can be used to solve this problem. So, but for this one, I'm just going to use the second one, okay? So here I have V is equal to VIT 
plus one half a t squared. All right. So again, we just have to identify first if there is a variable that is equal to zero to make our equation simpler. So for this case, we have again, vi is equal to zero. So therefore we have here vit, um, any number that is multiplied to zero is just equal to zero. So therefore we can just cancel this out. Okay, so now we have a simplified version of our equation, which is now equal to g is equal to one half a t squared. Okay, so now that we have this, remember here that the A is your acceleration due to gravity. You can put the G here if you want. Okay, there. So now let's um, uh, substitute the values here. So you have one half and then the A sub G is negative 9.8 meters per second squared times your time, which is four seconds, and then you will get the square of that. Okay, so this is what you will have here. So you have negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And then 4 squared is equal to 16. And if you notice, we can have here 16 seconds squared. So um, this is the beauty of writing down my units like a fraction so that I can see which of them can be canceled out. So as you can see here, we can cancel out the s squared so leaving us with meters so now let's input this in our calculator here negative 9.8 times 16 divided by 2 or you can also um, have one half as 0.5 okay so that's also another option so 0.5 times your uh 9.8 and then that's negative okay and then times 16. okay so this one gives us negative 78.5 Four meters. Okay. Again, the negative sign only means that your object is moving downwards. A tennis ball is thrown straight up with an initial speed of 22.5 meters per second. It is caught at the same distance above the ground. How high does the ball rise? Okay, so let's identify the given quantities here. Again, so when you're um, identifying the given quantities, make sure that you're reading the problem word for word so that you will not miss out on anything. So a tennis ball is thrown straight up. Okay, so remember that the motion is upwards. So if the motion is upwards, that means your velocity is positive. We have your initial speed. Okay, so or the initial speed here is also equal to your initial velocity. So there you go. Initial velocity is positive. 22.5 meters per second. And the first question is, how high does the ball rise? So we're looking here for the maximum distance achieved by the tennis ball when it was thrown. An object reaching its maximum distance will momentarily stop okay, before it comes down to the ground. So in this case, we can say that the final velocity is equal to zero. We have the acceleration due to gravity, which is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Again, do not be confused. Although the object was moving upwards, okay, the velocity is positive, but the acceleration due to gravity is always negative. Okay, so now that we have the given quantities here and the unknown quantity. Let's now compare this with our list of equations here to find out which one is the proper equation to use. Okay, let's start with the first one. So we have VF equals VI plus AD. Okay, oops, there's no Z here. So we cannot use this first one. Now let's try the second one. For the second one, you have D, okay, is equal to V I T okay, D is present, and then you have V I okay, we have that here. We have the A okay, which is here, but we don't have the time okay, so therefore we cannot use this one. Okay. Now let's move on to the next one. So we have V F squared okay, so V F is given, and then you have V I is also given. You have plus two A D, so you have A here is given, and D is also given. So therefore we can use the third equation. Okay, so we'll be using this. So VF squared is equal to VI squared plus 2AD. Remember the A here is the acceleration due to gravity. Okay, so now that we have this, let's identify if there is a variable here that is equal to zero to make our equation simpler. 
All right. So since your VF here is equal to zero, well, we can cancel the VF squared here because this one is just equal to zero. We are interested in finding the D. Okay. So that means we need to derive the equation to solve for this problem. Okay. So to do that, I will transpose VI squared to the left side. And when I transpose that, it will change its sign. So it will now become negative VI squared is equal to, okay, so what is left on the right side now is 2AG times D, okay? So here I'm solving for D, so I'm only interested in D. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to divide, okay, both sides of the equation by 2AG, okay, so that I can cancel the 2 and the AG here on the right side, okay? So leaving me now with D, Okay, so I'm going to rewrite it, having the D on the left side of the equation. And then I'm going to move this part here, the one on the left side to the right side. So this one now becomes negative VI squared, okay, over 2AG. Okay, so now that we have this equation, we can now substitute the values here. All right, so you have here D is equal to negative. Okay, your VI is equal to 22. 0.5 meters per second. And then we need to get the square of that. And then we will divide that by 2 times your acceleration due to gravity, which is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So now let's answer part B. How long does the ball remain in the air? So the hint here is that the time it takes the ball to rise equals the time it takes to fall. Okay, so for the given, we know that you have... Um, an initial velocity of 22.5 meters per second. So this one is positive because your tennis ball is initially moving upwards. Okay, And then we always have the acceleration due to gravity since this one is a free fall case. So you have negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So at the highest point, your final velocity is equal to zero. Right. So here what we're looking for is the total time. So when we say the total time, that is the time that it takes for the ball to go up, okay, plus the time it takes for the ball to go down. Okay, so remember, those two times are actually just the same. So what we can do here is that to compute for the total time, okay, uh, you can just simply multiply the time that you'll be able to solve later on by 2. So let's do that. So let's first try to solve for the time that it takes for the ball to go up. So now that we have this equation, let's uh, find out whether we do have a variable here that is equal to zero, okay? because it makes our equation simpler. So if we will look at our given, the VF here is equal to zero. So we can just simply cancel this out okay? because this one is just equal to zero. So making our equation easier, so that's equal to T is your negative VI over a okay so again the a here is your a sub g okay so now let's substitute the values so you have negative of 22.5 meters per second divided by negative 9.8 meters per second squared okay so as you can see we can cancel the negative sign here okay and then we can also cancel meter here and we can also cancel 1s so leaving you with only seconds. So which means that we were able to um, use the correct formula to solve the problem. Okay, so now for T. Okay, so let's use a calculator for that. So in our calculator, that's 22.5 divided by 9.8. And we get 2.295. Okay, so we can just round this off to 2.3. Okay, so let's have this as 2.3 seconds this is 2.3 seconds okay so remember this is only for the time to go up okay this is the time to go up so what we're looking for here is the total time that your tennis ball is in the air so that means we need to multiply this by two okay because that's also the time that the um, tennis ball will go down so therefore the total time Okay, it's just equal to 2 times your 2.3 seconds. And this one will give you 
a value which is equal to 4.6 seconds. Okay, so that is the total time that your tennis ball is in the air. So there you have it. I hope you were able to understand how we can solve our free fall cases using kinematic equations. So if you haven't subscribed yet, just click that subscribe button and hit the bell to get new notifications for our next tutorial videos. So thank you so much for joining me and good luck with your physics exams.